Yeah, hello and welcome to another update video about XRP. So before we start with the XRP analysis today, I'm going to show you what I said in the last video yesterday, and then we're going to take a look if this unfolded as expected, and then we take a look at the updated TA. And I think what can be unfolding here, at least that is how it's looking at the moment, it is a wave um, four triangle, a wave four can unfold entirely as a triangle, if this is a triangle, it means some more sideways movement. Um, and we can label it as a triangle. This is the pattern that is currently unfolding for some other cryptocurrencies as well. And we would have here a wave A to the upside. We would come down in a wave B. We would move up in a wave C. We would come down once more in a wave D and we would move up in a wave E. This would technically complete this triangle. And the problem with those triangles is they, they can extend, they can unfold, they can be longer than expected. We always need to be aware of that. And that wave four would only be finished at the top of the wave E. And we would expect in this triangle at the opposite side of the wave E. Okay, I don't wanna make it too long, but exactly this actually did unfold. So we hit here this um, trend line and we reacted to it very strongly. We moved down, in my opinion, here in a wave D. Now this wave D could now hit this support line at around 38 cents. Yeah, you have various touch points here. And to be fair, I haven't drawn that very accurately. And let me go to the one hour chart. We can draw that trend line. But the key message is here, the wave D did start. Yeah, it did unfold. The wave C peaked here. We are in, an, in a triangle that is at least with the highest likelihood, in my opinion, how it's looking like and we are currently waiting here for this wave D to finish. Now, the wave D should not drop below 37 and a half cents. If it does that, then it will um, not be a triangle anymore. It will be an incomplete triangle and will probably start the impulsive move down straight away. So this um, level will unlock much lower prices. But for now, I have to primarily expect because the price does adhere very well to this triangle structure. I have to expect primarily that we will, yeah, maybe come down a little bit lower in the wave D and then we'll move up in a wave E. Yeah, and um, depending on when it happens, we've got a resistance line here, the, the AC line. The wave E, however, should not at all move above the wave C. If it does that, then um, yeah, it will um, it will invalidate this, this triangle, yeah. So all the way until 43.3 cents, this can still be a triangle. You know, the advantages of really following the price so closely. Um, and we always, uh, yeah, you know, have different patterns of obviously, and um, it always helps you to learn about Elliott Wave as well. I know a lot of people want to learn about Elliott Wave, and I know a lot of people are following this channel to learn about Elliott Wave. So I always try to explain as well um, what is happening here without making it too complex because this is an advanced concept, you know, and you don't need Elliott Wave to understand price charts, but it can give you an additional edge because not many people do it and not many people follow the rules properly. So always try to help and explain things here. So, but anyway, what is happening in this Wave D? Where, where are we in this Wave D? Can we, you know, can we look into the lower level Elliott Wave count here? And a Wave D in itself, yeah, is, a three wave move normally. Now, one wave of these triangles is normally a more complex wave. And we can see here that this wave D is actually, un it doesn't look that complex, but actually is if you look into the detail, it's actually quite complex. Because um, what we can see here is that this actually is sort of unfolding in, um, so first of all, when, when we came down here, yeah, we came down here in a three wave move, A, B, C, yeah. So we've got an ABC pattern here, A. No, not that, A, B, C. It is a clear three wave move. Now, the problem is we have another three wave move here. Yeah, here, here, and here. So what I have to do I have to label this as um, an overall WXY pattern. So again, I don't want to make it too complex. I just do it because um, it might confuse a few people. The problem is if you have an, um, if you have an extended 
um, corrective pattern, then you have to, uh, or when you have several corrective patterns interlinked, yeah, then, um, so I shouldn't talk and label, um, then you have this WXY pattern. So it's a, it's a, um, it's a double zigzag, yeah. It is actually quite a, a frequent pattern. Um, yeah, so again, WXY. And what that means is that here in this last wave, in this Y wave in which I think we are, you also have an ABC. So again, you know, we have this. And this is just important to, to do um, and to use in order to understand this chart and, and this lower level wave count um, because otherwise you get to wrong targets. So A, B, C, yeah, so, and that means that this overall wave D of the triangle would be complete as soon as the wave Y uh, finishes and the wave C in the wave Y finishes. So what we have here is a wave C in a wave Y in a wave D. The question is now, where are we in this purple wave C? Okay, so to do that, we can count an impulse down because wave C is an impulsive wave. So we try to label this chart now based on what we've learned in terms of, you know, how to label an impulse. And when you look at an impulse, you can usually identify a wave three fairly easily by seeing it as either the most bullish or the most bearish wave. And I'm sure when you look at this chart, you will see the wave three straight away, which is this one here. So we can actually start with the, with the wave C if you want to. Uh, wave three, sorry. And then you can also see here that we have a very nice wave one and a wave two up here. So we have this as a wave one and this as a wave two. The wave two retraces normally quite a lot, yeah. Can come down to the high or come, come up back to the, to the beginning of the wave one. So one, two, three. And then this here is the wave four in my opinion. And we can just double check that. You will also have learned on this channel the retracement levels for the wave four. An ideal level is a 38.2% FIB level and here textbook like we've reached this perfectly the 38.2% FIB level and actually saw a strong reaction to it and in this week up we didn't even reach it again so I'm quite confident that this wave 4 could be in already and that we're now moving down in a wave 5 to complete the wave C. That means we would come down a little bit lower um, ideally yeah and to make a lower low compared to the wave three and that would then finish off here this overall triangle wave down and that could come down as low as 37 and a half um, cents. Um, one target for a wave five would be the 1.618 FIP extension of the wave one. So again we take here the wave one length and add it to the wave four and we see where we would get to um, 1.618 is at 38.3 cents and I think this would be a target that we have on the chart that would be a possibility here 38.3 is the 1.618 FIB extension of the wave one so one possible target here um, even the 100% FIB extension is a possible target now we reached that already the wave five is it finished? It, it honestly, it could be finished. Um, you sometimes get a wave five, which just very slightly finishes above a wave three or below a wave three, especially in these volatile markets, especially with having different exchanges. I don't think it's a very likely one, but the wave five could have finished here already. I don't think it's likely though. Normally we would want to see a, a lower low than the wave three, uh, but because it is the 100% extension, it is also a price target, right? For this um, so these are two price targets another price target that we can use um, is the um, wave a yeah so the wave a 1.618 fib extension but i think this is probably not useful to use because it will be higher so 1.618 fib extension of the wave a would be the wave c target now not useful because this is much too high. So we take that out and another target would be the 100% uh, extension of the wave W because this would be the target for the wave Y down here. And 
it seems a bit ridiculous probably to look at all these targets, but these are all legitimate targets. Yeah, we can't ignore them. Uh, let's see, and if we have a confluence here, then it adds up. Oh, nice. Look at that. The 100%, ex uh, no, the 1.618 extension of the wave W actually takes us to also 38.3 cents. So it would actually make sense that um, we finish somewhere here at around 38 cents, this leg down the wave D. Yeah. Um, also looking at the trend line here that's coming up. Um, yeah, I can draw that differently. Of course I could. Um, it's always a bit of a problem with these trend lines, but um, I think a few things point here to the 38 cent. So yeah, let's see if we actually get there. From here then I would expect a leg up in a wave E. Um, now that doesn't need to reach this trend line. It could also finish early and then the sell off down. That is how this pattern currently unfolds. A move below 30, um, seven and a half cents would invalidate the triangle to the downside. We would then get a faster sell off. A break above here, 43.3 cents would invalidate the triangle to the upside. And in that scenario, we will probably get a WXY pattern in which we would most uh, likely get into the following target area. So I just wanna prepare you here between 46 cents and 50 cents. But I cannot see this until we invalidate the 43.3 cents to the upside. Good, and that is currently here my analysis of XRP. What we need to understand is that with this triangle, we would finish off the wave four in green. We would then have, even when this wave E finishes, another move down a lower low, we would finish off the wave five in green. We would probably finish off the overall correction and then start to move up and finish the overall correction on the XRP chart. And that would be the completion of this overall correction. So it's quite exciting to see that we seem to be getting to the end of the overall correction. Um, still still a few meters away from it, yeah, but uh, we can, we come into the end. Um, what is important is that, first of all, we, we break out of the triangle to the downside. Also very important to mention that at any point in time, theoretically, the low can already be in for XRP. So we could already, earlier than expected, start to move up from here because we reached the higher level target area in yellow. This is for the higher level wave count, the overall target area. So I'm just looking at the lower level wave count to really specify this further but because we have done what we need to do from a high level wave count point of view, we have done what we need to do to complete the correction. So at any point in time, the price could move up and we could finish the correction off earlier. And um, whenever we see an impulse moving up, I will of course make you aware because this will then indicate that the correction is over and therefore I keep a very close eye currently on the crypto market here. Okay, so hopefully you liked the update. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. And if you really like the content, then check out the channel membership. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.